So, hello guys, my name is Max, and welcome to this second video where we continue to develop our Space Invader clone using JavaScript and HTML. So, we will start the last time to be us uh, do the basic movement of the sprites of aliens and the, and the movement of the tank sprite for the player into the game. But before we get started coding on any new features like, like the shooting and the blocking with the cities, I just want to make a small improvement to the code here. So, the last time I said the width of the application should be 502 pixels, but it should actually be 504 pixels. So, if you see now, just the aliens should go all the way to the edge of the canvas here, hopefully. Yeah, like that. So, that's the right, uh, the right what to say, behavior there for you. And then to make sure that it can't, that it change direction with offset, then we just subtract 30 pixels here for the width, and we should get back to the thing we had before here, where they go to a um, 30 pixel offset and then go down and then to the left. So that's it guys. Anyway, so let's get started coding our actual new features here. So to start off we just want to I just want to implement the shooting. So to start off just make sure that you have declared the bullets variable here at the top of the script file. And then just go down here to the well uh, yeah let's go down here after the tank perhaps so just create a new bullets list like that and then actually we will have a function that I will call create bullet and that will take a x position a y position a velocity in the y direction and then um, a, what do you say um, a width and a height like that and actually, we'll actually also have a color, so each of the bullets should be drawn at different, different ways. Here. Actually, we can call it bullet, that, I guess. Like that. And then we say this x equals x, this dot y equals y, this dot velocity dot y, bullet velocity y equals velocity y direction, this dot width equals v and this will leave dot height equals h like that and this of color equals color like that I guess and then we can just have a update method on the bullet class here update I guess and it will take an arguments but it will rather hold it here and then we just say this the y plus equals this of velocity y velocity y direction like so. Then to the screen, just make a new method and we can call it draw bullet and take a bullet as augment, of course. Then we can just say this dot cdx dot fill correct on the bullet dot x, bullet dot y, bullet dot width, and bullet dot height. Like that. And then before here, just make sure we set the fill style to the bullet of color. So the color here is a string hex code with the HTML color you want to use when we draw the bullet. And actually this may perhaps be better if we have it like that. So it's outside of the helper functions. Anyway, so after that is done, you just go down here to the update method or function and after we have set the, the x position, we can just say if input uh, is down or is pressed rather and the key code and after is 32 and that's a key code for the spacebar like that and uh, yeah and here we can just say uh, bullets dot push new bullet like that and that will create a new instance of the bolt class. And then for X position, that will set to the tank to X position. The Y position is 10 to Y. And then the width, also the velocity, is set to negative 8 pixels. And the width, 2 pixels. And the height, 6 pixels. And the color, let's set that to white for now. Like that. And then we can just go down here to the render method. And then we just say screen dot context 
save and screen the context dot restore and inside of here just loop through all the bullets so for i equals zero len equals bullets the length i plus plus oh, sorry i is less than len i plus plus and here we can say screen or draw bullets uh, bullets at i like that so for now, if we open up Chrome again, below the page, we got some error. So let's check all the errors. Let's just grab down there, see what it said. Is pressed. Okay, I missed, missed a D there. Like that, I guess. Yep. And we got some. Yeah, of course. So it's working fine. But as you can see, the bullets aren't moving. So. Let's just fix that real quick. So just go down, uh, go up here, I guess, and then you can say for bar i equals zero, len equals bullets, the length i i is less than len i plus plus, then bullets at i the update. And up until now, they should be moving also. Yeah. So now you can see the shooting is, is functioning here. But as you can see, they are drawn from the edge of the bolts of the tank sprite and we want it to be drawn from the middle so let's just set a offset before we do anything else to the when we create them so let's go to the x here, and then yes let's add 10 pixels i think that's the right amount let's see yeah so that seems to be working fine and if you a well, fun fact if you just change this to be down you get this rapid firing going <laughs> like this and that can be quite fun do our testing anyway but let's take it back to this pressed again by the way it is now it's not very good because the bullets never are removed from the game they just continue moving out of the cameras and start updating and taking memory so to fix that we will check if the bullets position is out of the canvas borders and so let's do that so we can say var b actually equals bullets at i and we can call b.update instead. We say b.update and then we can go down here and here we can say if b of y is uh, actually we'll add the bottom here so b.y plus b dot height. If that is smaller than zero or the y position is bigger than the screen height or the height of the canvas. Then we want to remove that one. So we can say continue here, just so we continue with the full view. And then we can say bullets splice, and that means remove as i, and we want to remove one object. And then just make sure that you uh, subtract from the y and the length variables the duration variable and the length variable so for now we won't get any errors and the bullets are actually now removed when they go out of the canvas and to prove this concept I can change this to let's say 100 and they should be removed when they are 100 pixels from the end there so you can see that it's working so let's put it back to zero for now and let's start with the shooting with the, of the aliens yeah, so let's do that. Uh, so, to do that, I haven't figured out a real smart way to do it yet, but I have one method that works quite well, so we'll use that one. Just after here, where we update all of the bullets, just do uh, another if statement, and we can say if math, the random, so this will be the frequency of how often the, the agent should shoot, so. 0 from 0 3 is quite a good amount there and the length of aliens active aliens is bigger than 0 that's just get rid of a bug later on and then we just save or take out a random alien from the alien list so we do this math.round math.random times the aliens the length minus 1 like that, and we will give us a random alien. And then, just make sure that we get the uh, first alien in the row of 
about aliens. Just loop through all the aliens again. <laughs> so that's uh, yeah, that's something we do a lot here. Just iterate through all the <laughs> iterate through arrays. Anyways, just iterate through all the aliens. Save that to uh, variable a or something like that, and then we can say. Actually, we can't use A here, we will use B. B, for God's sake, yeah. Anyway, and then we can say if the two bullets, if the, the alien, if this collides with this, and we improve the height of this one, if they collide, we want to set the A to the B, oh, yeah, instead. So for that work, we will need uh, the AABB intersect method I have done in the Pong game tutorial. So we just make a function of this this time, yes, like that, and it will take the same arguments as last time. So as x position, a y position, a width and height of one axis aligned bounding box, and then the same for another one. It's b dot v and b dot h like that, and then we just return. As a return, ax is smaller than bx plus bw, and bx is smaller than ax plus B aw, and uh, ay is smaller than by plus bh, and by is smaller than ay plus ah, like that. So that's the basic intersection function here for you guys. And then we can say if aa bb uh, intersect like that. And it will just take a dot x, a dot y, a dot width, a dot height, and then b dot x, b dot y, b dot width, and b dot height, like that. And then we just change the height here to, like, say, 100, so that they will intersect. And then we just say a equals to b. And since we're looping from the, if we go back to the game here, since we are looping in this fashion, we go from the left like that. So then we will say if we choose this alien, then it will loop and it will collide with this alien, and then we'll loop again, and then we'll collide with this alien, and so forth and so on. So that will eventually get to this alien, the front alien in that row. So, and then basically, when we have that alien in the front row, we can just call the uh, bullets push again I guess and a new bullet like that and then for the x position we just use the a dot x plus a dot half of the width of the sprite so a dot width times 0.5 and then the y position is just a dot y plus a dot h and velocity let's say 4 pixels the width 2 and the height 4 as well and let's set the color to white for this one as well so hopefully now, if you have done this correctly, the alien should be starting shooting here. Yeah, that seemed to be the case here. And I think this shouldn't be inside of the for loop, of course it should be outside of it. That's why they shoot more than one bullet at a time here. Anyway, so there you can see that the shooting with the alien is working as it's supposed to do. So now when we have the AABB intersect function, we can actually check if the bullet from the player it's one of the aliens. So as you very simple, it will just say, uh, sorry, it will, it will just continue with this function here. So we can just say for this stuff again, and uh, since we're using i up above, let's use j here. So the iteration variable is j. And we just loop through all the aliens, and then we just take out aliens, so can use A this time since we use B for the bullets. Sorry, J of course, like that. And then we can say if A A B B intersect, if the bullet of X, bullet of Y, bullet of width, bullet of height, if that intersect with alien of X, alien of Y, alien of height, and alien of width, this should of course be the other way around, like that. So if they intersect. Then we just want to remove from the aliens. So aliens uh, j no no sorry alien dot splice sorry j one so we'll remove one and then we just um, it can 
be linear, it should be length 2. Then we just increment or sorry, subtract from the iteration variable and the length variable. Then we just remove the same thing for the bullets. Uh, it's bullet i1 like that. And actually, we can uh, just call. Yeah, let's do it like this. I'm not sure really which we should break or continue here to continue with the bullet looping. Anyway, let's just loop through all the aliens, anyways. So for now, if I hit one of the aliens, they should be removed. And why aren't they that? Yeah, so I figure out the error. This should of course be a length 2 here as well. And then it should work fine. Yeah, so now it's working. <laughs> I had the wrong length variable there. Yes. Anyway, so now you can see that we can shoot against the aliens and they are removed. So that's, that's working. Anyway, so let's get the other way around, I guess. Actually, we can implement that as the last thing we do here. So let's just do the cities now. So the cities, it's a bit more complicated than the, anything else we have done so far. But it's not as complicated as it shouldn't be uh, possible to understand it. Anyway, so we will just create, after we have instantiated the bullets here, let's just instantiate our cities to a new object, like that. Just make sure that you have declared the cities variable at the top. And it will actually have its own canvas element that will set to null at the start. Then a white position that will set to the tank, the y position. And then we just take minus 30 plus the cities, uh, city sprite dot, uh, yeah, dot h like that. So we got that done. So we have a canvas and a white position and a height as well. And that will just be the city sprite of height like that. Then we will actually have a, its own init function or method. Um, I generate a damage method. If I can spell it right. Anyway, yep. And that will take. Uh, X and a Y position where to generate the damage. Then it will have a hits method. That will take uh, X and Y position in and checks if it, if that particular pixel is solid. Uh, and that will be clear soon here, I guess. Anyway, so in the init method, we just create our new our canvas uh, object. So we say it's the canvas equals document uh, dot create element canvas like so and then we just set the width of the canvas to the width of the canvas like that and then the height of the canvas we are set to the height like so and then the context very really important so let's just say make sure we this isn't really important step but I just like to uh, yeah what do you say type out all the variables we're using here so I guess it's a bit yeah uh, I used to do that in other more object oriented static type of languages anyway and that is just of course equal to this dot canvas dot get context and that would be a to the context and then we just draw four cities to the to the canvas so we say for bar i equals zero i is less than four i guess i plus plus and width drawn is a bit complicated so the width of the canvas now are 504 pixels so if we just subtract 60 from that and divide that by 4, you can see that we will get 111. And the width of the city sprite is 36 pixels. So we take 111, subtract 36, and we get 75. And then we just divide that by 2. And if 
supposed to give to add parentheses here. And that give us 37.5. So we round that up to 38. And then we just add 30 to that value. <laughs> and since we want it to be offset by 30 pixels from the right, and we will get 68. So 68 is our key value here. So we can say this as context. Uh, dot draw image city sprite uh, image and exposition oh, sorry and we all of course need all this as well so we have the city sprite uh, x city sprite dot uh, y uh, city sprite dot uh, width and city sprite dot h like that and then the exposition now it comes so it does 6 to 8 plus 111 times i and the white position is zero and then the width and the height is of course the width and height of the city sprite like that so that's it so that should generate the the what do you say the um, the sprites we are going to use it and then just to draw them just go down here to the render function yes and then we just can say Screen dot context dot draw image and cities dot canvas and the exposition is zero this time and cities y the y position. And open now we will get an error. Check if the, what the error is. Uh, the type of is incompatible with the expected type parameter associated with the object. Well, that was a bit of a drawback. Yeah, of course, we haven't declared it yet. <laughs> I'm so stupid sometimes. So we just go up here of the init method again, and then after we have the cities here, just make sure you call uh, cities.init, as it won't happen very much. I think. Yeah, so now the cities are drawn here, and they are centered the, since we have done the math we did before here. So now we just have the sort of complicated bit of de detecting if a bolt hits the cities, but we will actually do the generate damage function first. And this is how have I done by some testing, I guess. So you can see if it's saved. No, it's not. But I basically just drew out. I can do it again for you guys. I just create a new stuff here. Let's just center it. Where are you? Where are you? There we go. Center, like that. And yeah, so I basically just took the brush tool, zoomed in a bit, and then I choose the basic shape I wanted to have here. So I think it's something like this. I'm not completely sure. But anyway, I just declare this sort of shape here. Then I choose an X and Y coordinate. So I think this was the X and Y coordinate. And then I just took pixels values here and then I just draw say draw clear rectangles over all of the shapes there. So this should be X. If we say since each of the pixels are two pixels wide, so if we say that is the X position, then this shape here will basically be uh, what you say plus plus two X uh, and minus minus four Y and then to this uh, position there that will be plus uh, 4x I guess and minus 2y. Anyway, so I've done this and I will just copy this over from the code I've done before here. So yeah. Yeah, so here it is and this should be down in the description. And basically we just take an x and y position and we floor it down, round it down and then we draw all this stuff here. So we can say here underneath, let's just create some, generate some damage. And let's take a position, so 60 plus, uh, let's say six pixels, I guess. And the Y should be, uh, let's say, four or something like that. So for now, go back here, we get an error. <laughs> And I've got this in front of it. <laughs> I really know, knew what the error is. Yeah, and let's, so we actually can see it. Let's add some more pixels to the 
so six pixels and let's say eight pixels and let's see, add even more pixels there <laughs> anyway yeah so now you can see that basic uh, generate shape function there for you and so sort of all we need to do is just check to this function where we check if uh, a certain object is solid so for that one we will use the get image data of the canvas rendering context object so let's wait for it to load here and it will take a x y and a width and a height of the data you can check and then you can just check against this image data object and check against some sort of pixel value and see if that is solid or not so that's why we have the own canvas for the cities there anyway so let's get started with the hits function then and yeah so basically what it will do it will take a y from the y uh, y so since that is a coordinate in the in the complete screen coordinate system and then we just subtract with the y value from the, the, to get a local coordinate inside of the this canvas here yes you can say and then we just take out the data so we say this context.get image data of the x and y position and and one one like that I guess so I will take out one pixel and check and then we can say if the data the data and the third post so that's the transparency layer so we can say if that is not equals to zero and actually we could use any value here since yeah but anyway and if that's uh, not equal to zero then we generate damage to that position so x and y position and then we will return true else we will return false like that and then down here while when we are updating all of the bullets we can just say uh, something like uh, what do you say uh, if the y position and we will actually use this, the center position here of the bullets it's a bit lazy but anyway I will do it like that so bullet a height times 0 0.5 I guess and then you can say if the cities and the y is smaller than the bit of y plus half of the height so the center of the y uh, is, is smaller than the cities and um, the center of the bullet is smaller than the cities the y plus cities the height so if it's inside of or if it's uh, actually uh, what do you say possible to hit any solid uh, pixel then you can say if cities dot hits b dot x b dot y plus h2 and we just want to splice from bolts and do all of this again I guess so let's copy this paste it like soon and then just tab it in we should be good, good to go. So now uh, the game is actually in the finished state, but it will give us a real nasty error here, <laughs> and that's a fault of the Chrome browser, I think. And that is this error: an uncalled security error. Failed to execute get image data on canvas rendering con context 2D. The canvas has been tainted by cross-origin data. So this error is a real pain in the ass. And the only way I know to deal with it is to actually start a server with this file in it or use an, as another browser. So that's a bit stupid, I think. So we just open up a terminal. And if you have Python installed, to check if you have that installed, you can just use Python B or something like that. And it should type out the version number for you down here or something like that. 
and the version isn't that important, but yeah, anyway. And I will say quit, and I, like that. So just go to the folder where you have it, so Sublime Project for my case here, tutorials, Space Invader, like that. And then if you have Python installed, you can say Python M simple HTTP server that and that should open up a server for you at our post so let's go to localhost 8000 and now there yeah you can see that it works so I don't know really know what that error is about but anyway you can fix it by opening up our server or open the file up with a second browser so that's the basic game there for you and I will leave it to you guys to add a what do you say level system uh, score system or, and stuff like that. So that's it for me, guys, in this week's tutorial. And I Sorry, hope I see. I don't think we should add one video. final mechanic to the game, and that's this the mechanic where the aliens move faster while they are, when they are less of them. So let's just do that real quick. So just go down to the update function, and where we check if the bullet uh, hits here so if the bullets actually hit one of the aliens then we want to do a switch statement of the alien length actually as actually we can do it off the length too here since that's pointing towards the length of the aliens anyway so then we can say if the case is 30 or like that. Just break for now. And we have the case 10, case 5, I guess, and case 1. So, and this is how many ghosts there are. So, let's say if they are here, right? They should be on the other end of it. Anyway, like that. And I have no clue why I did it like this, but anyway, let's <laughs> get down to business. So yeah, anyway, so if this, if there are 30 aliens left, then we want to set the level frame to some number here. And remember, the level frame is the intensity of, of how fast um, they move here. So we can just set that equals to 40 for now. And if there are 10, let's set it to of that number, let's say 20, and if they are 5, set that to 5, 15, I guess, and 6 if there are just one left. So now, when I shoot the aliens and they go below, and if they are below 30, you can see now they are moving a bit faster. Maybe not, not that, it's here. But yeah, now you can see that they are moving even faster. And if they if I shoot some, so they only are 15 of them left. Yep, yeah, or 10 of them left. Now they are moving even faster. And if I hit, so they only one left. You can see that it's moving real fast and that it's shooting like a maniac. But anyway, I think that's the final game day for you guys. And I will leave the rest to you. And thank you for watching. And I hope I see you in the next video. And I'm thinking of developing an Astro game. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.